Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Chaos Head. Um, audio is again different. This is what my audio is supposed to sound like with the changes I made. Uh, the reason that the audio sounded different last time was because apparently Windows, for some reason, decided to set my microphone's volume in Windows down to 50% as opposed to the 100% that I have it running at with these settings. And as a result, I had to boost my audio in post, which makes it sound very different than how it actually sounds here. Um, so yes, again, uh, please let me know what you think about the audio. Uh, it, it is appreciated because while I think it's better than what I used to have, uh, it is actually s at least somewhat important to me how you all feel about the audio. If you think it's um, a decent quality if it's too loud too quiet whatever the case may be let me go ahead and get my timer started and we can go ahead and begin so we ended at a delusion choice last time so i think we did green last time i think so uh you know let's do red um uh, well whoops i didn't quite click on the right spot uh, Rumi didn't say anything, despite that, she didn't move away from my seat either. Let's try that again. There we go. Because I was hunched over, practically, de uh, eh. practically deep enough to sink my teeth into my desk, I didn't know what kind of face she was making. All I could see was the area around her waist, but that was enough to show me that Rumi was facing me. In other words, she was watching me. I've got to say something. I've got to spit it out. But... What should I say? But the more I thought about it, the more I drove myself into a corner as my mind went blank. Without any warning, Remy sniffled. Startled, I reflectively raised my face. She was crying. I didn't know why, but great big tears were flowing down her face. Even more bewildered, I was rendered so stupidly speechless that I couldn't think about anything anymore. Rimi muttered in a tearful voice. And Rimi turned on her heel and rushed out of the classroom. I wanted to shout. I wanted to say, no, you're wrong. I don't hate you or anything. It's just that I don't have any idea of what I should do. I wavered over whether to chase after her or not, but in the end I couldn't get out of my seat. If I did catch up with her, what would I say to her? Could I say anything? Would it be alright if I told her I like you? Would it be alright if I told her we're friends? Impossible. I didn't know Rimi. It was undeniable that she had saved me, but to me, she was still a mysterious figure who had suddenly ended up in front of me, appearing out of nowhere. Even if she said, maybe you hate me, I had no means of responding to her. Because I had no memories by which to judge whether I liked or disliked her. Ah. That was when Misumi, who was supposed to have been hanging around the transfer student, came back. He looked at me with pitying eyes. <laughs> <sighs> what the heck was that? When that thing started going in this, in this direction? I held my head as I shook it violently from side to side. Uh, 
But from then until graduation, I didn't have another opportunity to talk to Rimi. We avoided each other if we saw each other in class. And after graduation, just as Misumi had predicted, I became an antisocial slacker and never met Rimi again. That, perhaps, would be the bad end. Which was sad enough in itself. But it is a fact that I didn't understand Rimi. When he got down to it, my only real option was to stay still and keep silent. Taku? Rimi, who had kept her mouth shut up until now, began speaking to me at last, in a somewhat timid tone. But it came out of the blue, leaving me unable to show any reaction. If I were in Rimi's shoes, I'd probably feel as if I was being ignored. In my heart, I knew things shouldn't be on shouldn't go on like this, but I ah. What in my heart, I knew things shouldn't go on like this, but in the end I couldn't do anything. They left out a word. This time, I nodded desperately. It may have made me seem pretty suspicious. So, Rimi's voice was gentle. I could hardly believe it was happening, but it seemed like I'd managed to avoid the bad end. You alright? She said. I suddenly wanted to ask her. That time, when Rimi came across in front of 107, how had I looked to her? Considering that she didn't have... She didn't make any reference to them, I had to think that she didn't know anything about everyone having temporarily vanished from Shibuya or about the wheelchair riding Shogun. Which in other words suggested it had all been a delusion of mine, as I might have expected. I wanted to ask Rimi about it, but I really didn't feel up to lifting my face and questioning her. In any case, I couldn't do it today. I wasn't mentally prepared enough. So next time. I'll ask her the next time I come to school. That's what I'll do. Until then, I'll start organizing all the things I need to ask her about. The transfer student? Why would she come here, I wondered. Did she mean to blame me for not helping her when we were on the stairs? But she didn't seem like the type to do that. Maybe she had some business with Rimi rather than me. The transfer student stopped once she had come up to Rimi's side. She didn't say a thing. What did she want? As long as Rimi was here, I couldn't raise my head. The transfer student's toes were fidgeting in her shoes, but she still didn't attempt to say anything. For some reason, the transfer student left a band-aid on the edge of my desk. It was a fancy bandage, one with an absurd-looking character, a Garo Froggy, depicted on it. <sighs> was she trying to give this to me? Uh, I was at a loss for how to react. This Orihara Kozue girl was kind of weird. Huh? Was she crying? Why would she cry? Because I was not replying to her? But she wasn't saying anything either. Rimi followed up for me. Uh, somehow it gave me an indescribable feeling. I knew almost nothing about Rimi, but she knew me well. I suppose that's one way to say it. Because, <sighs> I mean, I'm more of an introvert, but I mean, I'll look people in the eye when we're talking. <laughs> this character doesn't do it, like, at all. <laughs> the transfer student bowed her head deeply and returned to her own seat as if fleeing. Oh. 
Why had she given it to me? Since Misumi's return. Okay, I thought he was done talking. The operative word there was yet. Clearly indicating that he does plan to get her get his hands on her at some point. He just hasn't succeeded yet. Yeah. Kinda figured that out. So so I don't think that's quite how that works. No, not really. <laughs> I shook my head with all my strength. Oh no, whatever shall we do that the character who doesn't talk very often to people face to face uh, hasn't been talking for a while. That's because you're here. I wasn't fully prepared yet. I'd never had an intimate conversation with a female friend before. For that matter, I'd never made a single female friend ever, even once in my entire life. でもさ、今、<laughs> マジで同性に対して容赦ねえな。ま、小杉ちゃんは俺が守るからいいけどな。ほんの数十秒前に大地も相手するの疲れたって言ってなかった。うっせ。小杉ちゃんはタクと同じ匂いがするぜ。ほ
Nanami came running over, carrying a waste basket. It looked like she had been in the middle of cleaning and was going to throw its contents away. Rashid spotted me in the blink of an eye. I tried to ignore her and get out of there fast, but as expected, Nanami wouldn't let me run away. She pulled at the hem of my uniform from behind. Of course we're running away. We want nothing to do with you. Don't chase me if you don't have any real business with me. You understand quite well, don't you? You aren't my little sister for nothing. Not that I had any need whatsoever for a 3D sister. Or you could just not. That works too. Damn it. It had turned out like this in the end. Regardless, I longed to somehow escape from the curse of this depression-inducing sister of mine. No, even knowing it was impossible, it al I'd at least like a little repayment for putting up with her. I thought that all the time. Ah, I know. Here's my chance to spring into action with a plan I'd previously concocted. It could turn out to be a small, quiet form of revenge. I took a look at our surroundings and beckoned an anatomy and began walking toward the courtyard. Don't follow creepy people who stutter when they talk to you and tell you to follow them. She was the type to get obnoxious over every little detail. Stupid sis, incapable of coming along after me in a nice, straightforward way. Nanami's eyes went round. Don't do it. Don't do it. There were a few people in the courtyard. It became boisterous when the students eating their lunches during the noon break, but the only people who came out here after school were those in the gardening club. Nanami put the waste basket she was holding down on the ground, then puffed out her chest, grinning. She was constantly finding ways to piss me off, to think she'd demand some kind of payback. On top of that, I treated her the last time we were at McD's. Meh, whatever. Yeah, but I'm lying. <laughs> so sorry for being a liar, lol. And so I handed my cell phone to Nanami. I asked her to dial up 03x733x991, the number recorded in my received calls history that had sent me that prank call. As seeing Nanami cock her head dubiously to one side, I swiftly told an appropriate sounding lie. Because he doesn't believe we have a little sister, or, you know, something creepy like that. Ah, jeez, so obnoxious. All you've got to do is shut up and do as I say. If you can't, go home. I've got no need for you. I made as if to swipe back my cell phone, but Nanami yanked her hand away, dodging me. I don't want to hear it from you. I forced down my anger, held my breath, and watched as Nanami dialed the aforementioned number. The clueless Nanami put my phone to her ear with a carefree look on her face. 
waiting for the person at the other end to pick up. I could see a yellow bangle on her wrist as she held the phone up. That was the bangle I'd given her, or rather the one Nanami had started wanting all on her own. Did she wear it even when going to school? I wonder if she'd taken that much of a liking to it. Just such a cheap looking free extra bangle. Nanami had no taste after all. Well, not that I had any right to talk. Wait, none of that matter now. Now then, who is going to answer the phone? Will it be some scary juvie type asshole? I hoped it was a mere prank and had absolutely nothing to do with either Shogun or Yua. Uh, it seemed that the call had gone through. Nanami cupped her hand around the receiver as she spoke into it. But she soon knitted her eyebrows together and stuck the cell phone out of my direction. I snatched the phone back from Nanami and put it up against my ear. What I heard was... She was right. Which might mean that it had been a plain old prank after all. Get a prepaid phone meant to last a couple of days, randomly call a bunch of numbers, then toss the phone when the prank was over. That was how it might have worked. Even so, it was an awfully large scale prank. Well, not that I cared much either way. It wasn't a problem now that I knew the mysterious call really had been a prank. Dude, way to just dump your little sister. I walked off, leaving Nanami behind, but she soon caught up with me. You're such a bother. And who said anything about explaining? Refusing to engage with Nanami as she hounded me, I hastened toward the school gates. Infuriated, Nanami stopped in place. But I kept going. She yelled in a voice loud enough to resound through the whole area. When I looked back at her, fed up, she was glaring angrily at me, shoulders tense. Shit. Thanks to her shouting, the people around us were starting to focus on me too, even though it was my policy to stand out as little as possible while at school. My sister was as obnoxious as... Eh. My sister was obnoxious to the bitter end. Disregarding Nanami, I scampered off toward the gate. At times like this, running away was the best alternative. Baka! I became exhausted hearing Nanami's voice even after I'd passed through the gates. I really liked an artist called the Zuma Matasuma. Er, no. I, what the hell? <laughs> Matasema. Or Matasema. I don't. Something like that. Azuma Matasema was a really famous artist, and long, snaking lines invariably formed at all the events his doujin uh, circle participated in. The Barachu doujin he'd released this summer had sold out in the blink of an eye. I wanted to go myself, but market events were all alike and being packed with people making it impossible for me. It made me cry inside, but I had to give up. I'd been naive to think it'd be okay since stores like Mangadr ah. Mangadrake would sell some on uh, consignment. Sure enough, they had it for sale, but it had all but disappeared instantaneously. In online auctions, it came at a premier price, around tens of thousands of yen. Fucking scalpers. 
In any case, with things looking like this, I figured it was probably possible for me to get my hands on it. But yesterday, I had happened to see it mentioned on Atchan that Manga Durake had recently restocked with his new publication. Which led to my heading over there immediately. After praying to the heavens unbeknownst to anyone, I stormed into the store. I kept my eyes peeled and searched the Dojinji corner. I made countless round trips and looked again and again, just in case. But I couldn't find it. So disappointing. Ugh, maybe it had already sold out. I mindlessly surveyed the register. The cashier was a girl. She wasn't that cute, but she seemed friendly enough. <laughs> I had never used a super high level technique like asking a clerk if a product was in stock, not even once. The reason, of course, was because I didn't have the guts to. Not to mention the fact that Azuma Matasema's new work was entitled, Sarah Goes Wild with Cosplay. Totally impossible. Excuse me, do you have Sarah Goes Wild with Cosplay by Azuma Matasema? If I asked a female clerk something like that, no matter how I look at it, you're a perv. Uh, thank you very much for coming. In the end, I quickly gave up on asking the clerk and left the store in dejection. <sighs> or maybe I'd go to At Cafe. As I walked on, torn, a familiar sword grazed the edge of my field of vision. With a unique shape and a forked blade, it was the one girl B, Senna she'd called herself had been walking around with before. In the midst of the crowded shopping district, I saw the tip of that sword stick out above the heads of people going along the street. Because she was coming this way, I hastily retreated into a nearby arcade. When I hid away in the shadows and peeped out to see what was happening, Senna herself soon appeared with her sword resting on her shoulder. Wearing the same frightening face as ever, she swiftly made for the station. Whatever the case, she didn't seem to have noticed I was there. Even so, I had to admire how unapologetically she walked around, because I'd also undergone the humiliation of going around with a D-sword in hand. But wasn't she mortified to be carrying a huge sword? Rather, the police must have taken her in for questioning at least once, no doubt about it. As I continued on that train of thought, Senna's form went steadily into the distance. Where did they sell badass D-swords like the one she had? Personally, I wasn't that satisfied with the one I'd acquired, which didn't have a cool shape or radiate light. The Senna sword in comparison demonstrated fascinating good design sense. I had gotten my hands on a D-sword in hopes of using it as a kind of protection charm. At the time, trembling in fear, I had sought a means of support for my heart. It was much more stable now. I was a much more stable now. No, no, no. I was much more stable now after the stuff with Rimi, but despite that, the situation surrounding me hadn't undergone much improvement. You don't need the, the uh, word A there. I still had uh, many enemies like Shogun and Yua. It was precisely because of this that I possessed the desire to obtain a much stronger looking D-Sword. Of course, it was just due in part to my collector's mentality as an otaku, but... Hey, dude, for all you know, stronger D-swords look plain. Drawn along by the sight of Senna's D-sword, I floated all the way over to the pedestrian scramble before I realized what I was doing. Crap, I thought, biting my lip. I hadn't wanted to come to the plaza. I reluctantly went to the shopping district in school because I had things to accomplish there, but so far as it was possible, I wanted to avoid going near them. When I realized that there were tons of people standing around me like this, it gave me the illusion that all my escape routes had been stolen, and it became hard for me to keep breathing. As expected, the station plaza was full of people today as well. Feeling sicker and sicker, I hunched over for a little while, holding in my nausea. Because of that, the next time I raised my face, I had lost the sight of the, or eh, I'd lost sight of that eye-catching D sword. It looked as though she had walked in the direction of the Hachiko statue, but right then, the lights of the scramble crossing turned green. 
Huge numbers of people rushed into the crossing in all directions. It became a little chaotic. I thought it was kind of amazing that all these people could go in whatever direction they wanted without bumping into each other. Seeing this, I became well aware of how unrealistic my delusion of the empty pedestrian scramble had been, the one from two days ago. It might be the case that over the course of a whole year, there wasn't one second of time when this place became vacant. Besides, what I had intended to accomplish by chasing after Senna. I couldn't do so much as ask a Mangadarake clerk about whether a product was in stock, much less start up a conversation with that unsociable and scary looking Senna. Besides, she might be my enemy. I had no idea what could hap end up happening to me if I merely trailed after someone like her, defenseless. What was wrong with me? I'd better go back. Having come to that decision, I started to turn on my heel. I noticed the white chain on the pavement. And my timer was just about to go off. We'll go a little bit longer. Plus, though people's legs concealed the place it led to, it seemed to extend from almost exactly where I was standing to the opposite side of the pedestrian scramble. What could it be? It was a remarkably long chain. Was it being used in some sort of construction? But I couldn't detect any other traces of construction work. I didn't think they'd leave just this one chain lying around. A prop from a location shoot for a movie or a TV drama? No, they couldn't use it for that at the time when there were so many people here. If so, had someone thrown it away? A chain that is so long? It'd be hard enough simply to bring it here. Whatever the answer was, it was definitely going to impede the progress of cars and pedestrians. I craned my neck to see how those around me were reacting. I thought it'd be dangerous if someone happened to trip over it, but I didn't see a single person paying the slightest attention to it. Maybe my eyes were playing a trick on me, I figured, so I rubbed them before squinting at it again, but the chain was lying there, as I thought before. Also, it was too eerie for me to work up the courage to touch it. Rather than being cheapish looking and made from plastic, it was a very sturdy looking metal type. I wondered how long it had been left alone here. <gasps> if things were the same as usual, I would have thought this as being some form of trap. I would have fled in fear at the thought maybe at the end of the chain something horrifying was lying in wait for me. But for some reason, my current self was helplessly interested in where this chain led, in what it was connected to. My heart was controlled by the mysterious illusion that I needed to trace my way along it. And we're going to go ahead and end this here. So I will see you all next time where we will be continuing Chaos Ed. Um, a quick reminder that I do have a Patreon and a Discord. You can find links to those down below in the description. I do highly, highly, highly recommend that you join the Discord because that is my go-to place for posting about channel happenings. If you want to know if there's any potential interruptions to my recording schedule or my streaming schedule, which is something I've been getting into for uh, like the past month or so. Um, with a couple of interruptions here and there. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be it for, oh, and for the Patreon, that is the easiest and best way to support the channel, in my opinion. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you get early access to all of my videos. Um, but yeah, that'll be, and you can find links, to both of those down below in the description. And that'll be it for this part. Like I said, I will see you all next time, but until then, a goodbye and farewell.